In this video, I will introduce the differentiation rules. They are the quick way to compute derivatives. My goal is to compute derivatives of common functions without having to use the definition as a limit each time. In principle, I can always use the definition, but unless the function is simple, it gets messy. And also, it is slow. What's the better way? Without further ado, here are the basic differentiation rules. I am calling this way of presenting them the lazy version for reasons that I will explain later. The derivative of a constant is zero. The derivative of a power, x to the c, c is a constant, is c times x to the c minus one. And this works for all real numbers c. The derivative of a sum, f plus g, is the sum of derivatives, f prime plus g prime. The derivative of a constant c times a function f is the constant times the derivative of the function. The derivative of a product f times g is a bit more complicated. It is f prime times g plus f times g prime. And the derivative of a quotient f over g is f prime times g minus f times g prime over g squared. This last one requires that we do not divide by zero. Yes, these six rules allow us to compute the derivatives of quite a few functions quickly. I will explain where the rules come from and how to prove them, and I will also explain what I mean by the lazy version. But first, let's see a few examples of these rules in action. For my first example, I'll compute the derivative of this polynomial. A polynomial is a sum of terms and every term is a constant times a power. According to this rule, the derivative of a sum is just the sum of individual derivatives. And to take the derivative of a function times a constant, I simply take out a constant. Now, each of the individual functions is either a constant or a power. The derivative of a constant is zero, and I have a formula for the derivative of a power. Let's use them. And now I can simplify for good measure. That's it. It was faster than using the definition of derivative as a limit, wasn't it? To be fair, I wrote many steps here. Once you have computed a couple of these, you will probably be able to skip the steps and go directly to the final answer. For my second example, I want to compute the derivative of this function. It's a rational function, a quotient of polynomials. I can use the quotient rule directly. The derivative of the quotient is derivative of numerator times denominator minus numerator times derivative of denominator. All of that over the denominator squared. Next, I have to take the derivatives of these two polynomials. Each one of them is exactly like the previous example. And that's it. We can simplify it. I will omit the intermediate steps. And the final answer is x squared minus 2x minus 1 over x squared plus x squared. These are my last two examples. I want to compute these two derivatives, and even if they look a bit different, I can still do it with the basic differentiation rules. Look at the power rule. The exponent can be any real number. It doesn't have to be a positive integer. I can rewrite these two functions as powers. I can write one over x cubed as x to the minus three, and I can write the square root of x as x to the one half. And now I can compute these two derivatives with the power rule. And if necessary, I can rewrite them a bit. Back to the differentiation rules. We now know they are useful, but we still need to prove them, and we have to prove them from the definition of derivative as a limit. It is worth it to spend the effort to prove them. We only have to do it once, and then we can get so much profit out of them. Imagine how many times you can avoid having to use the definition of derivative. 
As an example, in the next videos, which I will link in the description, I will write proofs for the product rule and for the power rule. The rest of the proofs are either very similar or much easier, and I invite you to try them as an exercise. Finally, why did I call this the lazy version? Strictly speaking, we have to be a bit more careful when we write the statement of these rules. As an example, here is the proper statement of the product rule. I begin with a real number a, and two functions f and g define at and near a. This is the same as asking them to be defined at least in an interval centered at a. For simplicity, I will refer to their product f times g as a function h. The theorem says that if f and g are differentiable at a, then h is also differentiable at a. And in that case, we get the formula for the product rule. Why does it matter to have it written this way? Apart from introducing the notation properly, this theorem is an if-then statement, and that's very important. For the product rule to work, we need to assume that f and g have a derivative individually. If one or both of them is not differentiable, then the product rule does not apply, and the product function may still have a derivative that we will have to compute in a different way, perhaps using the definition.